Okay, so here's what I want you to think about this. The, when we're going to divide complex numbers like this, it's similar to what we had to do when we divide, when we take a square root of a quotient. Okay, so let, let's, let's look at an example of a square root of a quotient real quick. Uh, if we do something like, let's say, the square root of 48 over, mm, let's say, 7. Okay? The square root of 48 over 7. Now, how do we simplify this? What are some things we can do? Abel, hey, what can we do here? Talk to me about this. You can... Is it purple? Wait, no, no, this and this is stuff we've done this before. This is no big deal. I'm just trying to. Okay, so we're gonna first of all we'll see. We always probably want to first see can I can I simplify the fraction? Can I reduce the fraction? But I can't. 47 doesn't go into 48, right? There's no common factor there. So what am I gonna do to the to the single square root then? Separate it. Separate it, right? So I'm gonna break it into square root of the top divided by square root of the bottom. Does the bottom simplify? Is there a perfect square factor of 7? No. There's not, is there? Seven's prime. So there is no other. Seven's only divisible by 7 and 1. So that doesn't work. So the bottom, we're stuck with. But what about the top? Is there a perfect square factor of 48? Is 48 a perfect square? It's not. So what's the, what's the biggest number I would have to even consider then? 24. Half of 48. Well, where does 24 fall? 24 is between 16 and 25, right? So all I have to do then, I can ignore all of those and just work up from there, right? So say I, I try 16 first, and if that doesn't work, I try 9, and if that doesn't work, I try 4, right? So does 16 go into 48? Yeah. It does. I can rewrite the square root of 48. as the square root of 16 times what else? 64. No, three. three. 16 times 3 is 48. And what's the square root of 16? 4. So my answer is going to be 4 times the square root of 3 is what the top simplifies to, right? OK, so that's all the simplification we can do to the top and the bottom. But we're still kind of stuck here because this is not OK for us as an answer. It's the correct answer, but it's not simplified fully. OK? Right? Just like, if we back up a little bit, you know, I can't do anything to simplify the top there, and I can't do anything to simplify the bottom, but there's something wrong with the bottom. What do you think it is? What, what probably can't we have on the bottom in this case? An I. Yeah, we can't have an imaginary number on the bottom. So let's go back to our example. What are we going to do with this one then? What was our? Multiply the square root OK, good. Whatever the stranded radical is, if we end up with a radical stuck on the bottom, all we do is just multiply both the top and the bottom by that stranded radical, right? Uh, Caitlin, what's that give us on the bottom? If I multiply a square root by itself, what does it do? So square root of 7 times square root of 7 would be? Seven. I'm hearing it over here. Does that make sense? It would be 7. Okay. Because, and think about why. Because if I multiply a square root by itself, that's just squaring it, right? The easiest way to think about it is that's the same as squaring a square root, and so it goes away. If you want to do the whole process, it just would be the square root of 49, which is 7. But you don't even have to do that. You know it's always going to work. If I multiply a square root by itself, it cancels the square root. And so I just end up with a 7 on the bottom. Now, how many things are being multiplied on the top? Two. Okay, so Casey, which two? Do, how many? Three. three. I've got a four times the square root of three times the square root of seven. Casey, which two do you think I should multiply together? The seven and the three. I'm going to multiply the square roots. So the square root of three times the square root of seven is going to give me what? Yeah. Square root of 21. And then out front, I'm going to have that four. And now I'm done, because I can't simplify the fraction. 4 7 is done. And I, there's no perfect square factor of 21. So that's my final answer, right? And so we've already done that stuff. I just wanted to use it as an example. Question? Are you multiplying 3 and really doing that? 7 and 3. Yeah. How am I? Because, well, like OK. The first question, you said you're multiplying 3, but you're only 
you're multiplying three things because like let's take an example of two times three times four. There's three three factors being multiplied, right? Okay, but if I multiply the three and the four first, I could rewrite that as two times twelve, right? That's all I've done here, but I can't go any further than that because that's not a square root and that that is. See what I'm saying? Okay. All right, so going back to our problem then. We've got to come up with a with something with a with a strategy for getting rid of the I on the bottom. Okay, I'm just gonna anybody have any ideas? What do you think? Do like not like reciprocal but times it by itself? Okay, good. Let's try that. Let, let's try multiplying it by itself. Okay. And let's see what happens. And our goal is to make the eyes go away. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm not even gonna limit us to just this one example, we're just going to take a general random complex number, call it a plus bi, and we'll see what happens if we multiply it by itself. Okay, so let's let's distribute. A distributes to a, right? So that gives me a squared. A distributes to the bi. What's that give me? What's a times b times i? A, b, i. Yeah, whatever, right? Whatever a, now if those were numbers, a times b would maybe be a, a, a number, a single number. a times b times i. Now we got to distribute the b, i. So I'm going to get b times i times a. Well, that's another a times b times i. And then b, i times b, i is. B, B I squared. squared, I squared, but what's I squared equal to? I Negative 1, oh. right? right. Why would it be B squared? And so that almost works, right? Look what happens. We get A squared, and then if I, this is going to be just a, this whole thing is just going to become a minus B squared, right? But look what happened in the middle. Those didn't cancel. See, unfortunately, ABI plus ABI is just two ABI, right? So the I's didn't go away, but we almost did it. Almost got it. Well, not exactly, but we just got to tweak one sign here. Ah, okay. Not, not quite the opposite, but very close to it. We're going to take what's called the conjugate. So let's try this again. Let's try this with a plus b times i. Let's multiply by a minus b times i. Those are called conjugates. In fact, they're called complex conjugates because they're complex numbers. But with conjugates, look, look at what the relationship is. The a is the same, and the number b is the same, but the operation between the a and the b are opposites. Right? I've got a plus and a minus, right? So so those are complex conjugates. Now let's distribute and see what happens. OK, so if I distribute the A, what are the two terms I get? Jasmine, what's, what's the first thing I get when I distribute the A? A squared. OK, second thing. Okay, but negative, right? Oh, okay. okay. So minus a times b times i. Okay, now let's distribute the bi. What's bi times a? A times b times i. Those are just three things being multiplied together. Look what happened. Those are those terms are opposites. They're going to cancel. Right? Everybody agree? I've got the positive and the negative there. And when I add a positive of a number to its opposite negative, they always cancel. Add to zero. Right? So they're going to go away. And then the last term is going to be bi times negative bi. So that's going to be minus b squared i squared. But what's i squared equal to? Negative 1. So that's just going to make that term positive, isn't it? So what do we end up with? 
when we multiply complex conjugates, we just get the answer a squared plus b squared every time. Every time. Okay? Easy. So let's, let's practice just a couple of those. And you, you can get the answer without having to do any distribution. It always follows that pattern. We always have the pattern a plus bi times a minus bi equals a squared plus b squared. So what's the conjugate of that complex number? A squared plus b squared. Just well, that, that's going to be the answer. You're right. But what, what's the conjugate of that one? Uh, negative 2 plus 3i. Yeah, negative 2 plus 3i. The only thing that changes is the sign between the real and the imaginary parts. That's it, right? So if we multiply that by its conjugate, negative 2 plus 3i, what are we going to get? What's a? Negative 2, right? What's b? Negative 3. So we're just going to get negative 2. We're going to get a squared plus b squared. Negative 2 squared plus negative 3 squared, which is what? So what's, what's negative 2 squared? What's negative 2 squared? 4. What's negative 3 squared? 9. Nine. So our answer is 13. Okay. I want to I I I give you a little trick here for multiplying or for taking squares of negatives. What's going to happen if, if, if I take the square of a negative number, how is that related to the square of the positive number? They're the same, aren't they? Negative 2 squared is going to give me the same result as positive 2 squared. However, on calculators, it doesn't work that way. Right? Have I showed this to you? Does it, does it matter if you put it in It does. It does matter. So like if I pull up a calculator, watch what happens. I want you to see this because this is a really common source of mistakes. If I pull up a calculator and I try to do something like negative 3 squared, that looks fine, doesn't it? Squaring negative 3, look what my answer is. My answer is negative 9. That's incorrect. What do I need to do instead? I've got to put the negative number in parentheses, but that's so easy to forget. See, that gives me the right result of pos positive 9. That's so easy to forget. So what could you always do instead? Whenever you're squaring a negative, what could you just do instead? Square the positive. And then you don't have to worry about including those parentheses. Right? So I know that seems like a pretty simple thing, but I promise you that will save you many mistakes in your life if you do that. So whenever we see something like this, let's do one more. So what if we've got 7 minus 4... I. What's the complex conjugate? Seven. Valerie, what's, what's, what's the complex conjugate there? Opposite. So 7 plus 4i. So what's my answer going to be? Seven. It's going to be 7 squared plus, instead of making it a negative 4, make it a 4, right? 7 squared plus 4 squared. So it's 49 plus 16 is... What is that? 65? Okay. That's it. Right? Okay, so if we go back to our example then, why were we doing all this stuff? We were doing this stuff to, to solve a problem like this, right? So now let's put this back in context. What are we going to do if we have to get the i's out of the bottom? Yeah, we're going to multiply the bottom by the complex conjugate, but we have to do the same thing to the top, right? So we'll have... We're going to multiply by 5 plus 2i. Whoops. 5 plus 2i divided by 5 plus 2i, right? Now, what's that going to give us on the bottom? Ellie, what number are we going to get on the bottom? Because I'm multiplying complex conjugates. What squared plus what squared? What do you think? All this is, we're just doing an example of... of that, right? If I multiply a plus bi and a minus bi, I get whatever that number is squared plus whatever that number is squared, the positives, right? 
So for that one, then what's, what am I going to be squaring on the bottom? Five. Okay, so I'm going to get five squared plus two squared, right? Okay, that's it. So that's going to equal on the bottom, 25 plus four is 29. Everybody agree? So bottom's done. Easy. Top's a little bit harder, but you know how to do that now, right? This is just multiplication. I'm just going to I'm just going to distribute and collect like terms, right? So what do I get on the top? Sir, if I distribute the 2, what are the two terms I'm going to get? Um, 5 squared. Or if I'm, if I'm multiplying, I'm going to multiply oh, this. Multiply. Yeah, multiply. Yeah. 10 squared. 10. I'm going to get 10. 2 times 5 is 10. And then plus 2 times 2i would be 4. Yeah, that makes sense? Oh. Plus 4i. OK. <laughs> Now I'm going to distribute the 3i. I'm going to distribute the 3i. So what's what's that going to give me? So I'm going to get 15i plus 6i squared. Right? I've got i times i there gives me i squared. So plus 6i squared. And what's i squared? Negative 1. Negative 1. So all that's going to do is just change that to a minus sign, isn't it? Right? And now we can add up like terms. So what do we get then? We get 10 minus 6, right, is 4. Uh, 4i plus 15i. And I've got the common denominator of 29. So that's my answer. But the one last thing I want to do, I've got to make this look like a complex number in standard form. So it's got to be a plus b times i. Well, what's a going to be? 4 over 29. I'm going to split this apart, split the denominator into two separate fractions, which I can do, right? That's no big deal. So I get 4 over 29. That's my a plus 19 over 29. That's my b times i. That's it. That's the answer. That's the answer. Yeah. OK. Does that make sense? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, that's it. That's it. And the common denominator thing makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, really, if you just think about adding fractions, well, if we added 3 sevenths plus, uh, I don't know, 8 sevenths, how many sevenths do we get? Well, don't I just get, I've got a common denominator, right? So I would just get 3 plus 8 over 7, which would be 11 sevenths. All we're really doing is just going, we just work backwards. We just went from this step to that step, right? If I have a sum of, if I have a sum of two parts on the top and a common denominator, I could split that apart into separate fractions with, with the same denominator, right? Make sense? Okay. I put a short assignment up, only one assignment for all of lesson two. It's got, I don't know, it's like 12 or 15 problems or something, but they're just adding, it's just that stuff. It's not a big deal. Okay? All right, have at it. You can work.